All right, how you doing? I hope you're ready for this bumpy ride of a free lesson. We're gonna go through the shoulder. This is it, an advanced anatomy drawing for drawing the shoulder. And uh, just to understand simply how everything moves when it raises. And there's a lot of knowledge that is necessary to understand before I can really get into what does it look like when it's raised. I can just draw what it looks like when it's, when it's raised, but it's better to understand why it looks that way so you can draw in every other iteration. Prepare to have your mind stretched until it pops. Let's go in and fill it up with some information. Let's get going. This is a fair warning. This is not for beginners. All right, so the question was asked on YouTube. And by the way, I am Neil, professional artist and instructor on Udemy with over like 65,000 students, all happy. My uh, best-selling course is Anatomy for, Hem for Figure Drawing. Go to masterpaintingnow.com to check it out. You get it for $13 on sale. If the, if the code's not working for some reason, just let me know. And uh, yeah, I can give you the code so you can get it for a discount. Otherwise, it's normally like 100 bucks. So Bill Overbeck asked me, could you make a video about the vertical clavicle placement as well as the way the acronym, I'm not sure if that said acronym, don't know Latin, don't care, of the scapula distorts. So basically the clavicle, and I'll show you what the clavicle looks like from the top down view. It's kind of like a bicycle handle. So that's the first part we need to get into. So from the top view, the clavicle kind of goes like this. Uh, let's see here. Let's make sure I'm drawing with the color that's going to show up. It kind of looks like, like that. Well, it more, more so goes like this first, sorry. Kind of goes like this from the top view. It kind of goes like this. And then it goes like this. Then it comes back like that. And it has this little piece like this. This is the basic shape, kind of like handlebars. And then the scapula connects to it, but we're just going to draw the top part of the scapula. It has a blade that kind of comes like this. And it's kind of like the top part of the blade. Then it kind of forks off as a part that goes underneath. And it has this part that comes over here and connects here. Actually, what, I kind of drew that too close, but whatever. It has this little piece right here. And then these are connected together with tissue. And that little piece right there, I'm going to shade it. That's the acronym, however that word is said, right? So that's that piece right there. And this is fused together. So when the collarbone moves up or down, the shoulder blade has to react to it. That is the scapula has to react to it, right? So that's what it looks like from the top view. And it kind of creates this, you know, this basic kind of U shape. And that U shape has to move together almost as if one piece, when the collarbone's moving forward or backwards or up and down. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get into what this all looks like. So if you look at the skeletal from the front view, and we have to go over this, I know it seems kind of boring, like I don't want to learn about all this, who cares about skeletons, whatever, but this has to be done because otherwise we're not going to have a full understanding of you know what all this looks like and why it looks the way it does. So from the front view, the clavicle has kind of an angle to it because of that bicycle shape. So from the front view, front view it kind of you know, I usually just draw the clavicle kind of like this. And then you have the, the neck coming, coming like a straight pole, basically. You have these muscles, I forgot what they're called, coming off like that. And then you have the trapezius going in the back, right? And you get, a, get kind of like that. And then you have the deltoid, which connects to the back and the front. We'll talk about that in a second. But the clavicle kind of has that shape. And so it kind of it kind of comes straight at first because just like from that that top down view it kind of comes straight at first like this then it kind of quickly curves back like that because of that piece i showed you from the top down view and then it kind of comes out like this again where you have that little piece right there and then you have the connective tissue and it connects back which you can't really see from this angle but that would be that cronium like that and it comes back to the scapula comes down and then the scapula kind of this is now the back side of the body this this is the top part of the scapula like this and then the scapula, it's actually, um, believe it or not, a little bit smaller in the collarbone. I drew the, I drew the collarbone a little bit um, short there. So it's kind of make the collarbone a little bit longer. It's about like that. And the scapula comes down. It's actually not quite as long as that. It comes down like this. My anatomy course, I kind of draw it larger than life because I want people to really see the shape of it. Remember, part of it comes through, but we're just going to go with the basic blade part right here. It's the basic shapes that we're concerned with right now like that. So that's the basic shape of the scapula and how the muscles attach. And then you have the, um, a bunch of tissues, connective tissues and stuff, but you have, then you have your humerus bone here, 
which has this little groove that allows for different things to fit in there. And it comes down like this, right? Something like that. It's not quite the shape of it. it kind of has more of like this little piece that comes out right there that forms part that one part of the elbow and it has the other part comes out here. And then the back side has the, the blade part of it where the ulna wraps under. Anyway, we're not gonna get on that. We're not talking about the elbow. We're talking about this stuff right here. Anyway, so you have this other side where the cavicle comes. So now understanding the muscles is also important to understand what this is all going to look like when you raise your arm. But let's just kind of go into some of what happens when you raise your arm, like with the anatomy and stuff with the bones first. So when you raise, when you raise your arm, in fact, I can actually draw it right here. I can just take this drawing and we'll just go, here's the arm. Let's just raise it rather than redraw everything. We'll just do it this way. Now, I can't remember, does this, let me see here. I don't think the software allows you to change the, what's happening here? Hold on. Am I on the right layer? Oh, I'm not on the right layer. I don't understand. Oh, I did draw it on that layer. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know if it allows me, yeah, I just, he just kind of moves the whole thing. Like in Photoshop, you can take that uh, and put it there so you can rotate it on that. I don't know if you can change the position, but let's just go, we'll just do it this way. So we'll raise our arm out to like something like this here. And you can actually raise your shoulder though without actually lifting your arm. So lifting your arm to about, you can lift your arm to like, I don't know, probably about like here or so before the scapula and collarbone start to move. As long as you keep that relaxed, you can practice it yourself. Just kind of raise your arm up. You can, you can kind of feel the collarbone isn't really moving yet. And then it's when you start raising your arm higher, you have to raise your shoulder. But you can actually raise your shoulder individually. Keep your arm down by your side and raise your shoulder. Like try to touch your ears with your shoulder, but keep your arms by your side. And you can kind of see how that works. But anyway, when you start raising up higher, then you have to raise the collarbone. Now, this... This muscle is going to come in front of the collarbone, but we'll kind of draw right through it so we can disappear. it. So the collarbone then is going to come like this and it comes back, but it, now remember it comes behind this muscle, but we'll kind of draw what it looks like, kind of like that. And then the scapula is connected here and it's coming down behind like here, but the shape changes. I hold this whole thing has to turn and has to turn and move because of the connective tissue here, right? So if the collarbone is raised up like this, then the collarbone is now here and the scapula has to change its shape, not shape, but has to change its angle like that, right? So now the collarbone, or not the collarbone, uh, <laughs> scapula has to change its shape more like this. And sometimes on the back side, you can actually see, even the front side, you can see where it po pokes out right there, kind of creates a shape. You can kind of see that in some people if they flex their arm right and lift it up. Anyway, so now that, that happens. So now the a cronium, this little piece right here, is is coming like that and it's going behind. So you really don't you really don't see it so much when because the muscles will cover, right? So and we'll, we'll go in, into why that's in a second because we're going to talk about how the muscles attach, and then we'll be able to understand why the muscles actually cover. And you got to think about the deltoid as three pieces and where those pieces connect to. Then it's easier to understand why they cover up you know, these bones, but nonetheless, um, from certain angles, you can kind of see the, you know, the kind of bump of the collarbone. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase some of this here. We'll take our arm for now. I think I'm going to put it back. We'll just kind of set it here for right now. Okay. Right, so continuing over here, let's look at how these things connect. So you have your deltoid. The deltoid kind of starts right about here. There's a gap between where the deltoid and the pectoral muscle start. So the pectoral muscle connects to the part of the clavicle, connects down across the sternum, across the, like the fifth to the seventh rib or so. Then it, it kind of free floats now, and it connects over here to this upper part of the humerus bone and it comes down like this. So it connects right here. So those are the connection points. And then the light lines are the free floating parts of that muscle. The deltoid actually overlaps it, goes on top of that. So, but there's a, there's a space right here. 
where there's there's no muscle connecting and that's where you sometimes can see a kind of like dent like okay if i were to draw this right here like this sometimes you can see like a little dent in here like right there that would be like a little shadow little shadow spot now the deltoid then it comes over connects more to the side right so this is a front view then to the, to the side of the humerus bone and it comes up, connects all across here. This is the first part of it, like that. That's the first section. I figured, remember, the deltoid's broken into three sections. Um, I can actually look it up real fast, what they're all called. So that's basically the anterior deltoid, which is this part we just drew, the uh, middle deltoid, which will be this middle piece we're going to draw, and then the posterior deltoid, which is the backside um, that, that connects to the scapula. All right, anyway, so now let's go through the rest of how all this connects. So then you have, so that part here connects like this and you have the middle deltoid and it kind of connects to the scapula, It kind of roll, rolls around, it's kind of like right about here. And that would come out like this. We don't see the whole thing from the front view. And the back part, the posterior deltoid, which comes back there, we don't see it, it connects across the top spine of the scapula and comes like that. We'll draw that from the backside, but it kind of goes like that. So what happens when the arm is raised, this is important, when you raise the arm, it's this front section of the deltoid that we're mainly going to see. So if you move the arm to the side, maybe I'll do it with this arm here. If we take this arm and just kind of move it to the side, like maybe make it make her lift it up to where it's like this or so. And it could be a him or her, doesn't really matter, I guess. Like that. There's some parts there I don't really like how it looks now because that's that wouldn't be that wouldn't look the same. So we'll kind of we'll kind of erase some of this so we kind of redraw how this will be structured. So what happens here? The well, actually, if you just raise your arm and, unless you're shrugging your shoulder, then the deltoid isn't really going to change much. But I should kind of draw it like that, you know, kind of coming back, and then the part of the that's going to be connecting to it. So you have this first part. It kind of comes like that, free flows, and it kind of has a shape like this. All right, so that's the. Remember, it goes it goes around to the side. Like that, and it goes around to the side of the. Uh, the arm, so, the side of the arm is either depending on how this arm's twisted, either it's right here or it's behind us a little bit where we can't see. Either way, the deltoid is being pulled up like this, around around the backside of the bicep. But there's a, there's the middle part of the deltoid that we can also see. Remember, because that connects like this. So from the from the top view, if we kind of look at the top view, I'll just kind of draw it over here really fast. And I'm just gonna do it like a basic. So here's the, the scapula, and then part of the collarbone, like the bicycle shape, like that. Right. So from this top view, you have the middle, and it kind of connects like this. This is the middle deltoid. Then you have the back, the back piece like that that connects mostly to the scapula. Then you have the front piece that connects to the collarbone like that. Right, so that's kind of how it looks from the top-down view. And I go through all this in, in 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 a lot of detail in my anatomy course. Right, so that's pretty cool. That's going to draw that. It's going to go behind here. It connects to the same spot, but you don't see as much of it, so it goes kind of like this. We don't see the backside. We only see those two pieces. Now, sometimes this can have an interesting shape uh, when, you know, someone is kind of flexing whatever and pulling their arm to the side. All right, I actually forgot what I was saying. I had to pause the video for something else. Um, anyway, let's do this. Let's go ahead and erase this for a second. I have an image I can show you. Also, just I like to show proof of concept, you know, with, with with images whenever possible. So, when you have the collarbone, let's kind of draw this at the angle. It kind of comes like that, and then kind of comes back, right? And that's all we're really going to see, and it kind of comes like that. So, where that when you have the, when you lift your arm up, let's suppose the palms are facing down, because it looks a little different if the palms are facing us versus if the palms are facing down. Let's kind of draw it what it would look like if the palms were facing down, like if you're doing um, that certain kind of dumbbell lift, whether you know your palms are facing down, you lift the dumbbell up, versus where you can actually you can actually 
do it the other way too. Anyway, we know that the deltoid's connected here and it goes back around the back side of the arm. Well, in this case, that or the side of the arm. If your palms are facing down, the side of the arm is like right here. We can actually kind of see it. So let's go ahead and draw the, the bicep from this view. It'd be like thinner because we're viewing it from the front side. And we'd actually be able to see just a little bit of the tricep, which is back here like that. And right here is where the deltoid inserts. So we can now draw kind of like where the deltoid's inserting. And it has a shape like that. Now remember, it kind of covers, the bulk of the muscle covers up the collarbone. So we can't see the collarbone. We know the collarbone's right about there still, right? That It hasn't changed where it's at. Then you have, you know, your trapeze is coming back there. And if you can see the middle, the middle, um, the middle part of the deltoid, it's still connecting here. So it has to come like this and it has to come out like that, right? So anyway, we'll show that in a second. But so this is usually you just see this muscle here that depending if the angle is kind of, the person's kind of lean toward us or the camera's kind of higher, we can see kind of the, the top view a little bit. We might be able to see it a little bit. Remember I told you from over here, there's this little gap here where there's, where there's no muscles connected, where you have the pec coming underneath the deltoid and the deltoid coming off. And there's a kind of like that little triangle piece that's not, well, that shows up here as well. It usually has a shape where you can kind of see the shape coming like that. Then it comes out and you have the deltoid inserting, but the, but then remember the, the bicep inserts underneath there and kind of pushes up on it. So you kind of have this, well, actually the bicep kind of comes even higher over here more like that, but it has that shape to it like this. So this would be more, the bicep would be more like right about here. And then you have that middle muscle, the bracket radialis and the bracket. Anyway, then you have the, the lat, the latissimus dorsi, which comes up here as well, which I've kind of just indicated here, but you also have the, the pec muscle. Now the pec muscle, remember it forces itself and it inserts itself above the bicep, but below the deltoid. So it kind of comes off of here. It kind of has a shape like this and it kind of comes down like that. And then the, the breast muscle, or not breast muscle, the, um, that's the pectoral muscle, the breasts themselves attach onto that muscle and hang on part of it and so forth. Anyway, we're not going to go to that right now. I've gone to that in other videos. And then you have like a, a muscle, like you have the, the bicep or the tricep, and you also have a muscle that, I forget what it's called, but it kind of um, goes like this. I forget, I forget what muscle, it might be the, the teres, muscle teres minor or something. Anyway, I've talked about it in another video. And then you have the trapezius muscle, which will which will come off of that. And I talk about all this in another video, how all this connects and the shapes. It, and you kind of see the tricep in the back because it's a large muscle. So you can actually see most of it from this angle, but we're not, we're, it's a female, so you might only be able to see a little bit of it like that. Depends how buff she is. Right now, if we can actually see If from this angle we can we can see the um, middle deltoid muscle, it'd be right. It, it'd still be connected. So imagine that collarbone is still coming underneath here, and it connects to that part and comes around and connects to the scapula, which go, is just going back here, right? And the scapula is I don't know fitting somewhere in here like this. It kind of has, it's kind of moved a little bit because we lifted our arm up. Although it probably hasn't moved too much because our shoulder hasn't really lifted up, so it might still kind of be shaped like that. Either way, you have that the, the blade of it, and then it connects to that, and that. So the middle, it, it still connects over here to the side of the arm, but that middle part, if we can see it at all, would be like that. So then it then it kind of has a shape like that. So the whole thing kind of takes on a shape like this. Kind of shade that in so you can see the overall shape of the deltoid when the arm's lifted. So what happens here then is that's the We'll get rid of that. We'll just say we can't see that because we're not, we're kind of viewing it from the side. And I'll show a proof of concept in a second. Like, so, so the, the shape you're mainly going to see is this shape right here as it comes off of the collarbone. And then you might be able to see part of the collarbone come disappearing behind it. I'm going to move this one down too. So it kind of matches the side. You might be able to see a little bit of shadow here. You know, if you couldn't see any collarbone, it'd be like that. Let me go ahead and make the collarbone lighter colored here. Right, so you don't you don't see from this angle, you don't actually see the um, acronym, which would be like underneath here, it's being hidden. So you don't see that at all, or the distortion. You just see the muscle that's here. And it's not like it's gonna bulge or push out or 
make the muscle really look any different. So that's the main thing you're going to see. Like I said, I like to show photos when I can. So here's a photo from Google. And as you can see, when his arm is face down, like I said, the palm is down, you can see the, the bicep. Oh, hold on. Let me draw on a layer that's on top of it. That I can just delete. You can see the bicep here. Then you can see the latissimus dorsi. You have the pec muscle here coming up. It's asserting itself underneath the deltoid, which you can see here. This is the front side of the deltoid. And you also can see the middle, the middle deltoid right there, the middle side of the deltoid. And you can see the collarbone come down like this and then the pectoral muscle. And there's a little, remember that little gap right here between where the deltoid attaches and the pec muscle attaches. That's what's creating this cool little shape right there. Then you have trapezius. And you have that muscle here that comes behind the ear into the collarbone. I forget what that's called. There's actually more than one muscle there, but it's mainly that one big muscle. You could kind of see part of the brachialis there. I think it's the brachialis. And then the brachioradialis comes off of that and comes over that way. You have the part of the tricep you can still see. You can also see the tricep here. And then you can see part of the other muscle. This muscle is quite big from this angle on this guy. Um, that's the, I forget what that muscle is called, but if you, if you were to raise those arms up to where the palms are facing us, you can actually see that a little bit better. Right, so that's that. Go ahead and delete that. Delete that. We don't need it no more. And here's another image for proof of concept. So you can see here, I'll draw in this kind of color. You can see here the, the pectoral muscle, which is all right here, and it comes down underneath the breast. And you can see it like that. You can see the collarbone is here, and it's coming back, and then it's and then it's disappearing. The rest of the part, we can't see it. And you just see that front part. You only see part of the front part because her palms are facing us, so it's rotating. So where this is connecting to, it's connecting to the side behind us where we can't see where it's, where it's inserting and connecting. You can then see the bicep. And you can see that well, she has a big one of these muscles. So um, usually that muscle is not so big. And then she has her tricep here. And then the latissimus dorsi, which actually comes in front of that and, and the order of things. So we only see, I'm a color in the deltoid, so you can see we only see a part. We don't even see the full shape or the full part of the uh, of that front piece of the deltoid because it's it's going in and wrapping around on the other side so we don't see the full thing it looks very thin from this angle when the palms are facing us so before we go any further with the arms fully raised let's see what this would look like from the back view so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a new layer i'm just going to turn down this layer and we're going to draw right on top of it this will be the back view so we're going to kind of draw the neck muscles going like that Part of the jaw we'll still see the back of the head so all that kind of shape pretty much stays the same the trapezius muscles are going to come like so it's kind of like a kite shape and it comes down we'll, we'll also i'm just gonna do this lightly so you can see what the uh we'll kind of do the rib cage here like so Right, so that's from the back view. Okay, now when we draw the scapula from the back view, first off, you can kind of see the collarbone coming in the front view a little bit. So we'll imagine the collarbone is coming like this, and it kind of comes up and to the side. So sorry about my dog. So we can't see all this. It's it's in the front, right? So it's vanishing, but it kind of has that part that comes up right here. We can kind of see a little bit of this part right here, the part that comes up like that. And I, I'm kind of have to redraw the arm because the arm's a little bit lower than it should be right now. So just kind of ignore the placement of the arm. In fact, maybe I can just, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll be redrawing it. And then you have the part of the blade of the scapula that comes off right there. And you have the acronym that connects there. And then this kind of has a similar shape where it comes like, like this. kind of follows a similar shape like that. It doesn't come quite that far, though. 
And then you have the actual shape of the scapula, which is like this. This is this is if the person's relaxed and arms at their side. And it kind of comes like this here. Has a shape like that. Kind of like a triangle. And the blade comes off of it right here like this. And that blade, that's the part where muscles attach to. So you have the trapezius muscle comes here. It connects along here like that. Then you have the different parts of the deltoid. So the this backside of the deltoid, it connects off of this and comes like that and goes around and connects to the side of the humerus bone. Then you have the middle, which comes a little bit to the front and to the side. We can see the middle. We can't see the front part at all, at least not from <clears throat> this angle or the way that the arm is positioned. If the arm is positioned up and, and then the back side of the hand facing us, um, then we might be able to see, like if the person's flexing and then their knuckles are facing us, we will be able to see the whole deltoid. And I'll show an example. Actually, let's go ahead and just show an example of that now. I have a picture here prepared. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if the knuckles, see how the knuckles are facing us, then we can see the middle deltoid. We can see this back part of the deltoid. And you can see where the trapezius muscle is coming and connecting here along this part of the scapula here, that blade of the scapula. So you can kind of see it's connecting there. And this is kind of like, usually kind of more of a flat spot where everything's kind of popping out of. And right here, that little dent right there, that's where, I believe that's where the collarbone, the top part of the collarbone, and then the acronium come off right there. And then that's right underneath that. And that comes along. And then you can see the scapula, because his arms up, the scapula is kind of turned to the side like this. And it has a shape like that. You kind of see the blade of it right there. It's like, it's more like right here or so, but you can see it pushes this muscle out a little bit. And you can see here too. So we can't see that the full, the full view of that front part of the uh, deltoid, but we can see part of it. Anyway, so that's important to understand how shapes work when things are flexed and all that and raised. All right, then finally from this side here, you'd mostly just see, um, where am I at? What's, oh, that's right. You can delete that image. We don't need it no more. We can see where it attaches like that. Now we'll basically just see the tricep here like that. And then this would be like the elbow area. And then that kind of horseshoe shape that happens with the tricep like that. And then you would see the latissimus dorsi from this section, from this side, this is overlapping the latissimus dorsi. And it kind of comes like this, right? And then there's there's a section where the where this comes down, where you have the uh, trapezius muscle and the latissimus dorsi kind of tucks underneath that like this. And you have this area here, and that's where you get those other muscles I was talking about, where we can see one of them, the teres major and minor, or whatever. And I usually just kind of draw it like that. It's kind of, well, it's more accurate. It's kind of like you kind of see this, this one like this, and you kind of see the one underneath it a little bit, kind of like that. Anyway, usually they change shape when you like flex them and, and bulge. You can look at bodybuilders to see that. Now, what happens when, you, when we lift the arm up? Not a whole lot really changes, um, except we can see that less of that front muscle and then, and then the shape, this all turns. So let me go ahead and get rid of some of this. I'm going to erase some of the stuff we don't really need to look at right now. So I'm going to get rid of this like that. All this pretty much stays intact, which is why I'm going to just kind of draw it here. And I want to show what happens when you kind of move. So if you take this and you move your arm up into the side like this, Notice that it usually doesn't twist that much, but whatever. Something like that. Just make sure I'm getting the placement right. Come on. The, the scapula would, would probably not go quite that drastic of a change, more like that.
I can probably get rid of this underneath drawing. It's probably just getting more confusing looking at that. Like this. And then because this is now, you know, pulling up, this, this muscle here might actually cover up a lot of that. Then the you won't be able to see the scapula underneath it. You might be able to see a little bit of this muscle like that. And that there we go. And this is gonna this is actually gonna start changing shape too and kind of bulging because it's being flexed. Right? So it's kind of like that. And then if you raise your arm all the way up, it pretty much remains the same. And I'm gonna kind of redraw some of this. But we can kind of animate some of it, I think, without having to redraw. Let's see here. We'll just take that piece right there. And it kind of, we kind of already have it. It's going to kind of lift up because you have to lift your shoulder up here. But it's pretty much you know, already how it needs to be. And remember, we could, we could have lifted our shoulder out to the side without actually lifting this up. And now, Everything just kind of the same. You kind of just imagine everything the same, but you know it's connected. So you still have the. It's it's just to kind of imagine the shape of the arm here. Say it's coming out like this. So you still have that shape like this. We have the middle. The middle piece. Then you have this piece here. It's going to come and be stretched a lot. Now you might be able to see because it's coming forward. The collarbones coming up has to connect here. We're going to see a little piece of that front muscle and just a little bit of the collarbone right there. And then you'd have, you know, part of the bicep and everything coming off of here. And then you'd have um, a piece of dorsi is going to come up and stretch as, as well. You probably kind of pushes out like this and, and sees it like that. And you might only be able to see like the part of the blade right here of that muscle. And then this is going to come over it. And that's where sometimes you can see this, these other muscles inside of here. That's, that's the mainly what you're looking at there when the arms lift it up. That was kind of quick and sloppy. I could have taken more time to make that more clear. All right. So I was just trying to search Google, to see if I can find anything. It's kind of hard to find. That's the hard, the hard part. And unfortunately there's, you can't use something like uh, pose poser or Daz studio or whatever. Um, they just don't have like proper they, there's, I don't know of any, any 3d model on the market right now that has dynamic muscles where the muscles move correctly, depending on how you place arms and stuff. So, uh, even if you were to get like Daz studio and then buy, um, you know, proper anatomy pack and then buy the muscle, uh, muscle map pack where it shows the anatomy of the muscles, it's just an overlay drawing on top of the 3d model. So it doesn't change the way the muscles work. And it's actually incorrect uh, if you actually look at that model with arms raised like this you won't even see the other the front muscle at all it's just, it's totally incorrect how it looks um, but for the most part for like just plain poses it's, it's decently accurate but anyway so keep that in mind anyway so um you have to like you know take pictures of yourself or whatever i guess i could ask ask my wife to come in here and uh i could have done it that way but so here's what the person that's not like overly buff and I just kind of want to show so you have you can see this middle deltoid muscle here and notice this is the side insertion, right? So you have the bicep and you have the tricep on this side. So you can see the side insertion where it goes into, if he would have had his arms twisted more to where his, you know, if he would have twisted his arms toward his thumb or this whole hand, we're seeing the back side here. We're seeing the pinky side. And so his thumbs are facing away from us, then this would change the shape a little bit because this would rotate around that way and we wouldn't, you know, the insertion point would be a little different, which is kind of how I drew it more. Either way, you can see it. You can see a little peak of that, the front side. You can see the um, trapezius muscle here coming down. You can see the blade, not the blade, but the the side of the scapula here. And then it kind of, we know it kind of comes underneath here. You can see the, the blade is probably right around here, comes up like that. You can see this whole, this whole pinched area where you kind of get this, you know, that kind of shape there, this, this kind of shape right here. And that's just something you have to memorize um, like that. And then that's where the, 
And then remember part of the scapula like that. Anyway, the scapula is coming out. You can kind of see part of the scapula right there. See that's kind of pushing out. It's probably a little bit bigger like that. Anyway, you can kind of see it push out there on the on the corners, and that's also the shape of the um, latissimus dorsi. But when the arms are raised, that's usually the scapula that's pushing out because it has to rotate. Because remember the the connection point. You have the you have the oops. You have the bicycle handle. Then you have the connection point here to the to the blade of the scapula, and that's connected with tissue. So if this goes up, then this has to go like that, which means the whole entire scapula has to change sideways instead of going like that, right? So it changes its shape. Well, I mean, it doesn't morph or change. It's just, it's a mechanical thing. And if part of it moves, the whole thing has to move, right? So if you have this connection point that's connected to this shape right here, if this connect to it and that moves, then the whole thing moves, right? So basically it's like this, you take it. And if that piece moves, the whole thing moves, it rotates, right? And that's how you can see there. Hopefully that makes sense. Then you can see this backside piece here, which connects like, like that. And it's connecting all the way. We know it's connecting all the way over here to the actual blade, um, but we kind of raised some of the, oh man, I have to go back, hold on. Because I'm drawing on top of the photo. So I can't erase it. We can kind of see, see it kind of has this like shape like that almost, but we know it connects all the way over here. Like it connects to the actual blade itself. It's just, you know, the fatty tissue and other parts of the muscle. That's the part of muscle that builds up. So the muscle actually comes like that, but this is the part that bulks up more. The other part is more thin. That's other things to keep in mind. You can kind of see here and you can kind of see like that, but you see that's where it bulks up, but we know it actually comes connects like that. And then you have Leticia dorsi and stuff coming here and you have that in between spot in here where you can see some of those other muscles being flexed. Kind of hard to see the, in this photo, but hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. Let me see if I can find something else to show you. So here's another image. I just wanted to show how when this, when this muscles flex on someone that has bigger muscles, you can see there's a separation. Here's the connection point. Here's the overall shape of the deltoid from like that. But the middle one really has this bulk bulk up kind of goes like that. And these ones, cause that one goes to the front side, it goes further and this one goes to the back side, right? So it kind of has that shape to it. So you can see that shape, right? So, but to think about how, why that shape is there is this one, this side, the front, there's three sections of the deltoid. The front section is connecting to the front here where we can't see where it's inserting to the collarbone. This one's disconnected right here to the top bulking part of where the collarbone and scapula meet. And then this one connects all the way, you know, to the blade of the scapula and comes out and connects like that. It's like longer and thinner. So you get that kind of, you know, that kind of shape, like an M shape. It's kind of like an M, right? So I don't know, I guess kind of think of the M shape right there, if that will help you memorize the shape of it. You Then you get these nice, cool shapes here. And I think that's actually the muscle coming off of the scapula and the scapula is actually I think that might be the blade of the scap. I think the blade scap is actually a little bit more like that. And that's the muscle on, on the, on the other side of it. But anyway, here's a female where the muscles aren't as big. So you don't see the M shape because she's not like flexing, having these big muscles and it's more relaxed where her arms are up. So you can, you can still see the same insertion points. You can see the part there. You can see it kind of, you know, here you have folds of skin, but you kind of see that. Let's just get the overall shape first coming down here. See that little, bend right there. You kind of see that a little bit where there's a difference between the middle something somewhere in here like that, that kind of middle shape. Then you have this side and you can, you can see how this comes down and connects. Now, wherever this trapezius muscle is going like that, you can see where that's going. If you pay attention to that muscle and where it's going, that's going to give you the top blade of your scapula. Now remember the scapula goes behind that. We can't really see that, but that blade, you can usually see it. And we know the deltoid is actually coming around and connecting up there somewhere. Oops. Oh, I shouldn't have raised it. Anyway, so I, that line isn't actually the deltoid. That's just other muscles. The deltoid actually comes back over here and connects to that blade. And then you can kind of see the shape of the scapula. You know, it's kind of pushing out right here a little bit, maybe like that. And you can kind of see it here as well. Right there, they can kind of see it pushing out right there and they kind of see the shape of it. 
and then you have the blade part, which remember over overlaps the scapula shape. Oops, I kind of pushed it out too far like that. And then you can see the middle, see right, right where that blade of the scapula connects to the, where the collarbone comes here and connects there, where that's where is that connection. That's where you usually get that shape right there. And it's more of the M shape uh, if the person's really buff. And then it comes like this and it comes around like that. So you can kind of see the overall shape. So just think about that U shape, because if the person's really buff, it's just going to kind of take that same shape, except this muscle is going to kind of be more big like that, right? And so it kind of takes on a that kind of M shape, but the overall shape is still there. So from the top view, if you think about the deltoid having that shape right there and coming down like that to the side of the arm, right? So if you kind of consider that shape, oops, I didn't mean to come to a point. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Right, so let's go to the front view now. Turn that back up, and now we'll raise the arm all the way up from the front view to see what that looks like. All right, so now let's go into the arm, the arm being raised from the front view. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, just to make this faster. I'm going to take this, whoop, and we're going to. Oh, that's not, I'm not going to show that yet. Okay, I don't know why I did that. So I'm going to be showing this in a second, which is this image here. And a bunch of images, actually, I'm going to be looking at, but I need to be on this layer. That's what happened. Okay. I'm still on the wrong. Hold on. Where's the layer? Oh, it's way down here. Okay, there it is. Can I make sure you're on the right layer when you do this? We're going to lift the arm really high up like this here. We'll go something like that. Now, a lot of this is going to change shape, but I just want the basic thing there. All right, so all that right there is going to definitely change shape. And so will all this. Make sure I'm on the same. So the collarbone, remember, it kind of comes out like that and comes up like this, like a bicycle, right? That whole entire shape is going to come up and, and it's going to move and change shape. Well, not change shape, but it's going to move. And so we only see certain parts of it. So it's an, this it, this is at an angle and then it comes up like that. And then the other part wraps around. We can't see the part that's wrapping around, right? So what we're going to see is more just this. We're mainly, we're mainly just going to see this part right here that kind of comes up and disappears. And I'll actually move. You know what? I don't need any of that. I'm just going to get rid of it. There's no point having on that there. I thought it would save time, but it's actually just end up wasting me, wasting me more time. All right. So remember, part of the deltoid connects off here, and it has to come up like this and, and wrap around to the other side of the arm where we're seeing part of the bicep here we'd be seeing part of the tricep as well now what ends up happening is the then you have the tri the trapezius going behind you might be able to see part of the middle but mainly it's just this front part right that shape right there but remember the pectoral muscle also has to come up and go underneath here right and from this angle it kind of stretches so you have the pectoral muscle right here as well and and it, what ends up happening is usually this kind of is, ends up just blending together as if it's just one big muscle. And it kind of almost, especially if the guy's buffer, it looks like it's just the guy's pectoral muscle. But it's actually the pectoral muscle. Remember, the pectoral muscle goes underneath the deltoid. So if you can see this shape like this and it looks like you're seeing the pectoral muscle, you know you can't be seeing the pectoral muscle because the deltoid is over it. So this is the deltoid then. You'll see what I'm talking about in a, in a, in a little bit. I'll show you some examples. And then you have the Leticia, the Leticia dorsi and all that that comes off up here as well. And that goes in the back, but you can, you, sometimes you can see the rib part like that. Right, so that's the basic shape of it when it comes up. Now let's look at some. So you only see a little part of the collarbone and it just kind of comes up like that and disappears.
that's all you that's all you it's all you really get to see is that just a tiny little piece of that collarbone so hopefully that helps that guy's question i'm hoping that it does you can hopefully with all these mechanics and understanding how all this works and moves you can kind of figure out what that piece you know how how that distorts and what that piece is now if you want some homework <laughs> so to speak if you want some study thing you can do just go online and look up you know uh, for example I, I looked up bikini model arms raised uh, you can do uh, man arms raised buff man arm raised you know just different things and then go and try to draw over those photos to see you know the anatomy so you can see the collarbone is coming up right here it's disappearing we don't see it there no more we can't even see the trapezius muscles going behind but we know that this must be even though it looks like this is the uh it looks like it's the pectoral muscle we know it's not because the pectoral muscle only goes up so far and has to go underneath the deltoid so the deltoid is in here right so just you have to rely on your atomic knowledge and you can kind of see a, a break in that so you might be seeing two parts the middle this might be the middle side and this will be the front side of the deltoid that you can see and we know we have the bicep here and then the tricep which is here that other muscle that I always forget the name of, I think it's the teres major or minor. Then we have the latissimus dorsi coming down here, the rib cage, so it kind of breaks it up a little bit. And being able to do this, the reason why this is important to do is so you can you can start to get a feel for the anatomy and what's happening. If you can see it in these photos and kind of feel it out, it just makes it easier to draw through imagination. So here we know. We can kind of see the side of the arm, and that's where the deltoid inserts, so we can draw the deltoid inserting there. We know the pectoral muscle comes underneath, right? We have the collarbone. We know it comes out to here because it kind of has that bicycle shape and wraps around that way. Or it kind of, remember, it kind of comes up and then and it goes like that. So we kind of see the sideways, and then it kind of wraps back away from us. We don't really see it from the front view too much, especially because he's pulling his, it's pulling his collarbone down, but they all just kind of looks almost like a straight line here actually but we know that it's technically going like that and then it's kind of wrapping back a little bit and then it's coming back around again and remember it underneath here that part of the collarbone is like that even though we don't see it, it's underneath the muscle we know it's there and that's where that you know humerus bone connects to and then we know the scapula even though even though we don't see the scapula either because it's behind you know that scapula blade is behind here we know and it connects here we know it's there as well so we have the deltoid is blocking all that, but we can see that little notch right there caused by the collarbone and then the collarbone dipping underneath and coming back over here again, that kind of S curve that's in there. And then there's that kind of space where, you know, the pectoral muscle actually comes underneath and connects up a little bit higher than the deltoid. That could be another thing that's causing that shape to happen in here i've always it's sternomastistoid or something like that is what this muscle is called that comes to the collarbone here from the behind the ear and there's like another tendon there this one right here is a sternomastoid so it's, i think that's what it's called and you have the trapezius muscle back here and we know it comes back and connects back there so being able to see that and, and understand like how, how it's working i think will help a lot so let's go through some of those and kind of get an idea when talking about what what I kind of want you to go do for. I mean, it's not really homework, but you know what I mean, for fun, for practice. So here we have the collarbone. You can see it coming up here, and then it disappears underneath there. Same thing as here. It comes here, disappears underneath there. The sternomastoid or whatever this is called. You can see that. And you can see the trapezius muscle behind the neck. You can see the deltoid here you can see the bicep clearly that other muscle i forgot the name of it might be terry's major terriers minor don't know it doesn't matter just know the muscles there then you have connected all here is the latissimus dorsi the pectoral muscle we know goes underneath the deltoid so the deltoid we know connects to about the halfway point of the collarbone so we know the deltoid actually comes out here somewhere even though it looks like it's all one muscle there kind of just flows again that's good to know like understanding the flow of these muscles the shape they kind of take as just one muscle like you can kind of see like this is kind of looks like it's 
you know, all shaped like one muscle. But, you know, why does it take on this shape? Because we know that the deltoid comes here and comes like that, right? Then we know the pectoral muscle is coming underneath like that and connecting. And then you have, um, he's kind of moving his arm forward. And so all these muscles are kind of pushing in. And remember the the pectoral muscle has to connect underneath here and a little bit higher than the deltoid. The deltoid is wrapping, connecting to the side over here like this, underneath the bicep where we can't see it. And then the pectoral muscles come, has to come up here and connect higher on the bone. So it comes down and then comes across like that. And then I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right, but it kind of comes like, why not just draw it like this? Like, because he's buff, right? So it, it pushes that part of the muscles built up. Like this is the bulky part. And so it kind of has that shape right there. Not really sure how to explain why, why it does that, but it's because his arm is moving forward. It's kind of pushing that muscle more the way he's flexing. Here's one of a female shrugging her shoulders up. And, and this one might be a little bit confusing because, but just remember the collarbone, we know it doesn't end here, right? That's not where the collarbone ends. We know the collarbone goes farther, comes out to the side here, underneath all that, where then the acronium part of the scapula comes back around that way as well, where all the rest of the deltoid and trapezius muscles attached to. You can really see her, I'm just going to call them sternos right here really well. And then you can see the trapezius behind there. So on top of this here, you have the deltoid. Remember the deltoid goes like this. You can see that front part. You can't really see the front part too much. We're seeing a little bit of the middle one too. And you can actually see come all the way out here and have a, have a kind of a bumpy bone. I don't think the collarbone goes out that far. It might, the collarbone and part of the, um, I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's the arm bone though. That's sticking out right there. Anyway, pretty sure it stops right here. I don't see how it would go out that far. You can kind of see part of the middle deltoid behind there. I'm kind of shaded in like that. All right. So if you take the overall shape right here, oops, I don't know why I just drew that so high. Take the overall shape. Know that most of that is the front pectoral muscle, which actually is starting more like that. And then you have the pectoral muscles coming down and they come up and connect higher. And then underneath here, you have part of the collarbone. Just remember that goes further and the other part goes back like that. And then I think this is part of the bone that sticks out right there of the humerus bone, I think. Pretty sure. The pectoral muscle actually comes down here a little bit further. Okay. This one kind of far away, but I, you know, it's not, not a good photo really, but I just wanted to show how you can see the pectoral muscle. Come, comes right up and connects to the to the deltoid there. It just kind of looks like it's all just one muscle, but it's, you know, we know that it's not. We know that it's a deltoid there, but just to get an idea, you can see that nice V shape that's created there by the muscles. And I've gone over another video about the armpit and stuff, so check that one out. We can zoom out a little bit for this one. So I'm doing some of the exercise right now live with you. So we got that collarbone. We know the collarbone then is, is disappearing underneath the deltoid, but we know the deltoid actually comes off the collarbone right about here or so. So I want to kind of draw the full shape. It's kind of, it's kind of twisting. See the, the muscle normally would just kind of, if you have the collarbone coming out like that, you'd have the muscle normally coming like this, that front part of the deltoid would just kind of be like this, right? But because the collarbone is, is twisted, the whole muscle is being lifted up like this and the whole muscles, that's why you get that kind of curve right there in the muscle because the muscle itself is being contorted and stretched and scrunched. I just drew all that and I didn't undo it. 
I forget I'm not drawing on a separate layer. I should be drawing on a separate layer. Oh well. And then you have you know the bicep, which you can see here, tricep, which comes up like that. The other muscle comes here. Then you have latissimus dorsi. Then you have the pectoral muscle, which comes down. Right, so you can see that whole shape there. Again, you can see it over here. Deltoid, pectoral muscle, which comes down. I didn't realize I took so many photos. Sternomasta, whatever, mastatoid, whatever that thing's called. Deltoid, you can see it here. And then you can see the pec muscle coming down. It's all kind of comes together as one piece. Like that. And understanding like where, like also just kind of, draw the breast on top of it just to kind of get an idea she has kind of smaller breasts but you can kind of see if they are larger where they would fit on top of the pectoral muscles so if you're used to drawing men or if you if you understand the anatomy of drawing pectoral muscles then you can you can find the way the breasts fit on there and if you do enough of these exercises you'll remember like how much the breast is connected how much of the breast is actually that that oval is actually connected to the pectoral muscle Right, you can see all those muscles there. This is the last one. So here you can see when a guy is buff like this, it's not the best sized photo, but when a guy is buff like this, you can see his this all ends up just looking like one muscle. Like it's so buff, you can like here you can kind of see a separation between the deltoid and, and the pec. But we know that the deltoid actually comes over here more and it kind of bends. But we can't even see that because everything is just so there's fatty tissue between the buff muscles so it's hard to see the delineation between them but they're there underneath it all you see the rib cage there right hopefully that helps uh, if there's any more questions please let me know and i'll consider whether i should do another video in the future on it So just let me know. Um, I'm trying to think if I, this video is already so long, I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything I wanted to cover. Um, maybe the shrug. So remember, you can have your arms down by the side and you can still shrug your, your shoulder, right? Let's kind of get rid of some of this here. All right, so what's going to happen is the collarbone is going to kind of curve upwards like this because we're lifting the shoulder up. So one thing I like to do sometimes is kind of imagine the what's the shape it's going to happen. It's going to kind of, you know, the overall shape it's going to happen is going to be kind of like this, right? So just kind of think about the shape. And then you can kind of fit the anatomy into that shape. So the collarbone is going to come up and then it's going to disappear you know that s curve is going to disappear in there so we're going to have um you know mostly the middle and that front piece and then we know the overall shape is going to kind of go like that but we're only going to see like their buffer doesn't see that part of it we might actually see more of a shape like this and then this is going to kind of the trapezius muscle comes in front of that part of the muscle right and if it's a female, we're not going to see as much of, of much of that. Pectoral muscle we know comes up over here as well. Trapezius or not trapezius. Tricep is behind the bicep there. Right, and then you can kind of just you know that's like the anatomy of it, and you just kind of erase all that and you know, just kind of what is it? What's the overall shape here? You know, it's going to be something like that. And it's a female. We know the where the breasts kind of attach onto the pectoral muscle, and you have the pectoral muscle right here, which then would turn into part of the breast, depending how big you're making the breast. Which you draw 
oval. Right, you get the idea though. Sometimes you can kind of see this like little thing like that, you know, in the breast where the that part of the skin overlaps there. You want you wouldn't see too much of the collarbone anyways, honestly. You might, you might see a little bit, depends on the person. That's the idea. You can you can lift the collarbone up, you can lift the shoulder up, you know, without lifting your arm up. Another thing that's kind of interesting is what if we rotate the arm forward like it's coming toward us? So I'm going to raise some of this here. What if the whole arm's coming toward us? So we have this kind of like shape here. And I, I got to get about and when you do this kind of stuff, you have to think about how do things, you know, work like with foreshortening and it's kind of coming toward us like this. So it's being foreshortened. And you'd have the forearm, which would be even bigger, coming at us. Then you'd have the wrist and the hand and the thumb and oops, the thumb and stuff. And all this would start getting gradually bigger and bigger as it's coming toward us. So we have like a force perspective, something like that, right? Anyway, so when this happens, and you know, it's not always good. Like for animation stuff, it's good like to have, you know, force perspective because that has to happen as they go through those motions. But for a, a final drawing, you might not want to do, even though it's technically correct, and you can even like, you know, have a photo like that. It you, know, you don't see photographers usually doing too much, like odd looking um, perspective like that because it just looks strange. Like when you look at it, like hey, that just looks weird. It looks even more weird when it's a drawing, where you don't have all the you know, shadowing and stuff happening that you would have in a photo. But what happens here is the collarbone is being kind of rotated forward a little bit, right? And so is the scapula a little bit because the arm's coming forward, which makes the scapula, so if you have the ribcage here and the scapula is, you know, back here like that, when you rotate the arm forward, the scapula has to rotate around the arm as well. And so now the scapula, you know, it like changes its position. It has to like rotate around like that, right? You don't see that from this position, but we know that that's happening. So I'm just talking about it just in case you don't know it's happening. And then this is going underneath this muscle just like before. And we know that it starts here, right? So we know that what's happening is it has to go like this and wrap around, but we know the pectoral muscle also has to come up. It has to wrap underneath here as well and go around and connect to the, to the upper part of this bone underneath here. So it has to go like that. So you're going to have this kind of, oops, this kind of shape with the pectoral muscle kind of like that. And right. So it's running into the, and then we know the bicep and everything's coming off of here. You might be able to see some of the tricep. It depends how big the person is, you know, how buff they are. You might actually, even if they're not very buff, you might be able to see a little bit of that tricep just because of the angle. We're seeing the inside of the arm here a little bit. Right, so all that, and that's kind of how it would look like if they, they're pulling their arm toward us. And, it, and if she has breast, if this is a, a female that has breast, because, you know, not all females have breast. That might sound strange, but it's true. The breast would literally go underneath here, right? So the oval would be kind of like this, like that. So then we know that something's wrong here because that's not that wouldn't look right. So what happens then? So we have to think about the fatty tissue and the the squishiness of the object and all that, right? So we know that it's all being smashed. And so then what might happen is, you know, part of the breast would be smashed up like this and smashed to the side like that. And then it might change the whole entire shape because now we're just kind of squishing the boob all over the place here. You know, and then you have to shade it. And by shading it, you know, that's going to give you the proper shape. So I don't know, maybe the light's coming from over there. Right, and then you might see some of the cast shadow. And then all this would be shaded as well from that same light source. Right, and that it might, it might go like that. And it just depends on if the arm is just on top of it and squishing it down or whether 
it's kind of squishing into the breast because there's different ways you can do that, right? You don't have to squish it that way. What you know, that's that's if you squished it sideways more. What if instead you wanted to keep the arm on top? So you're like, I'm, you know, I'm I'm gonna put my arm right on top of the breast. I'm not gonna move my arm. So let's say that's the shape of the arm. I'm gonna put it right on top of the breast. I'm just gonna squish the breast. Breast. <laughs> you kind of you only put your arm down so far if you're squishing your breast like this, right? If they're bigger, big enough breast, and you're trying to squish your breast with your arm, your arm would only go down so far because the breast would stop squishing. They don't have infinite squish squishiness. So in this case. I have to kind of imagine how it's going to look because, you know, it's going to be hard to find a reference for this, you know, and that, that's why it's good to know how to draw from imagination because there's certain things you might want to draw and it's like, hey, I can't find a reference for that or even anything close to a reference for that. Um, if you have big boobs um, yourself, you can always do a reference of it yourself. By the way, if you're a guy and you don't have big boobs because, you know, there are guys with female boobs because they want to have them for whatever reason. Um, what you can do is you can take water balloons, right? So let's say this is your rib cage and this is your collarbone and this is your neck. <laughs> you can take water balloons, put, put a string around your neck so it comes in, in the front like this and tie two water balloons to that string, right? Bigger water balloons. So there you go, like that. And then you can actually take your arm and put it on top of the water balloon and kind of squish it down and look in the mirror or take a picture of it to see what does that kind of look like? You know, how does it squish? Because water balloons have a similar squishiness to breast. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wing it. And I know it's going to kind of squish out. And this is just understanding mechanics of things, like just understanding how. And I, I know it's going to kind of squish it more oval, right? Because it has to. It, it can't go anywhere else. And it's going to kind of have a squishiness like that, you know. So now if the light's coming from over here, let's say like, like that, this would all be shaded. But part of this here would kind of look like this. It would kind of like have a darker shadow right here, I think. Right? Because it's the way it's squishing. But it would definitely change shape, you know, as it's squishing on top of it. And I think it would have to squish out a long way. Then also some of it would be squishing back here, which we can't see. Um, so, yeah, think about uh, squishiness of things. And that just takes it takes a lot of taking a balloon or just something and just squishing or playing around with breast a lot um, if you have a girlfriend or a wife like you know i have a wife so i can just grab her boobs and just squish them and play with them and i can actually ask her can you just make this pose for me really fast and see what that looks like actually let's do that all right so i have my wife pose for me really fast and actually doesn't take this shape at all it kind of because remember the the pectoral muscle and all the fat tissues are coming up this way. Remember that when you raise your arm up, it kind of has a, a shape like this and all that kind of stays the same. And then if you add breast onto this, all that, you know, that shape is still there. So all that's being squished. And squish it. So basically most of the squishiness comes in the bottom. So the shape, the shape of the breast is still here, and like the all remember all this right here is like a thicker fatty tissue which comes down to the breast. You can't see that because that's you know anatomy that you don't see. So this kind of fatty tissue right here, and it, and it ends up pushing out this way into this into the sides here like that. So it kind of just changes the shape this way a little bit. And it kind of pushes up on this fatty tissue right here. So it ends up kind of looking like that. All right, anyway, there you go. That's that. Let's make all this anatomy look like this. So this would be like normal size, you know, without it being squished. And this right here kind of, because all the fat is being pushed out this way more, it kind of changes the shape a little bit like that. Anyway, all right, cool. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, long lesson. But there's a lot of information in here. And if you want me to go over other things with arm, you know, rotation or anything, like maybe, I don't know, like one thing I know that a lot of people, like especially with three-fourths views and like pulling your shoulder forward or backwards, because you can also, you know, have this for pull the shoulder forward or you can pull it more backwards so you see less of it and everything else covers it, right? And then when you're in three-fourths view, you know, a lot of the shoulder is hidden. So if you have, 
you know, the collarbones like this, and you have a three-fourths view of the rib cage, let's say like this, and you have just part of the rib cage, and you're seeing the side of the rib cage here, and you're seeing some of the front of the rib cage, and that collarbone's going like this, this collarbone's coming out this way, and then the neck is somewhere in here, like that. What happens then is the breast change shape. I've gone through this in my different breast tutorials. I go through it in my anatomy course as well. And remember the angle of the bottom of the breast has to be the same angle of the collarbones. So if the collarbones are like that, the line, these two lines should be parallel to each other. And so the breast will fit in there like that. And then you have that kind of skin that comes here. And then you're only going to see part of the shoulder right here. Like you're just going to comes up and you're just going to see part of the shoulder there. Whereas this side, you're going to see the full shoulder and you'll see the side where everything connects, you know, the muscle coming up here, that coming down sideways, kind of cover part of the rib cage. All that's going to be visible like this. Whereas this side, you're only going to see part of the top and just a little bit of the side and then the arm coming down sideways like that and so forth, right? And I need to change the shape of this one a little bit because it's not parallel with that one. But you get the idea. Right, so that would be like three-fourths view. So anyway, we can, and I kind of push the boobs too, too close together, but you get the idea. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Ask questions in the comments. And do me a favor, if you found it, this video helpful at all, do just, like, I'd given you this for free. This took a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of time to do. I had to do a lot of pre-thinking. Like, I had to explode my brain with a lot of pre-thinking about all the mechanics and how stuff moves and everything. And so, you know, a lot of pre-drawings before I made this, you know, before I made this video. So do me a favor. All you have to do to, to show me you're, you're thankful that you're glad I made this and want me to make more videos is hit the like button. That's it. Maybe leave a comment. All right, thanks.